Hey guys, what's up? This is Connery from Out of Work Outdoors, and today I just want to show you what I think is the best beginner lure. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about if you're just starting out fishing and you're getting tired of the worms, you know, because they're a little messy and they will die on you if you don't take care of them. So in a way, it's kind of wasting money. So your next step is to go the lure out. And if you're new to fishing, you're not going to know what to buy. Okay, so you see a lot of these guys out there at the stores. You don't know how to use them yet. Okay, so and you see a lot of these guys as well. You don't know how to use them yet. Well, you need to start off with something that's really, really simple. Something you can just throw out and retrieve right back in. And that's where the rooster tails come in. Ta-da! So this is one of the first lures I've ever fished. And it's still always been one of those lures that you uh, kind of just want to keep in your tackle box. And it's a good lure because a lot of beginners, we start off fishing like, say, bluegill, panfish, maybe crappie. And then right after that, you know, usually the first time somebody would, would uh, actually go to something else would be for trout. And because, you know, there's a lot of trout derbies and things like that. So that's actually the first time when I actually uh, used one of these uh, rooster tails. And it was for trout. It was actually in this color right here. The the green, actually, let me take it out of the box. This is the, it's actually a trout color, believe it or not. Trout color for trout, right? So... It's actually the trout color, or trout pattern. Well, I call it trout pattern. It looks like this. And it's green with an orange. So it when it when you're retrieving it through the water, it, you'll see a gold reflection, and you'll see orange turning to green, orange to green, orange to green, kind of like that coming through the water. And I don't know for some reason fish like to bite it. But anyways, I would think this is the your first lure every angler should pick up because it's cheap it works and it was also one of my first ones and everybody in the project has fought, uh, has uh, actually fished this before with good results everyone has actually caught fish with this so it's never like a bad idea to not have one of these in your tackle box especially if you're going for smaller fish like say just bluegills or uh, a lot of times we'll you'll catch sand bass with this as well or white bass for that matter and even the bigger fish will hit this uh, bass pikes pickerels they love this stuff as well all your predatory fish they've they'll like this as well i don't think there's any predatory fish that we haven't caught on these so there's definitely a lot here for the money and these are just the ones that i have i carry this one this one and this one because those are the three hottest colors that i have and believe it or not most of these i've found i bought this one found this one this one this one and this one okay so that, that's how popular these these uh these little guys are and just to give you an idea of, of uh, different sizes and the different uh configurations that come in it's like there's like everything every possibility of colors hook i mean blade colors everything and i have another version there's an, actually there's another version called the vibrating because this was the original. You see it put from the packaging. This is original. Uh, there's also another one called a vibrating where if you pay attention, if you are paying attention, the bodies here are very uh, just kind of round, cylindrical. And then the vibrating has got like a irregular shape. It's almost like a triangular shape on the body. And on that one, it's uh, when the blade flips around and it touches that part, it makes almost like a clicking sound in the water. So... It, it's just more uh, attractive to fish when they're really, really aggressive. But uh, there's different sizes, okay? So this is like probably the smallest size that they offered in. This looks to be about inch and a half. These are just some of the colors I found them in. As you can see, they come in a single, single trailer hook. Well, there you go, single trailer hook and treble hook. You can barely see it, but it's in there, okay? I promise you, it's right there treble hooks okay so that's one size and usually the next size up from that would be these and these are just the black ones I've had a lot of success with black and most of our guys when they start fishing 
you start off with the black one because it looks more like a, a fly, you can say. But that's the black one. These are about the maybe two, two and a half. Look like that. And last but not least, this is not actually the biggest size. There's more sizes than this. This is the one I found, so it's a little dirty, but a little bit of, you know, cleaning up will do just fine. And of course, you've got different colored blades as well. And these are the hottest colors that I've found. Um, I'm sure there's other colors out there. And I'll now, and I'll show you a flash in some video of how many colors are you know, is available. You can pick these up at your local Walmart. That's probably going to be the best place to pick them up at. But every uh, bait store is going to have these. And they have them because there's a lot of beginners out there. And then everyone just wants to catch fish. And these are some of the number one uh, just lures I would go with. Uh, especially for uh, trout during and for some reason the if it's a natural trout it probably won't take this but if it's like a, a stocked trout like during uh, fishing derbies for some reason those trouts are they're just not super bright so they'll bite just about anything and we've gone to derbies where you know we've thrown out power bait worms and you know you name it and they would bite but it's like a slow bite where these are more of like throw it out there cast it in I mean, reel it in, and like maybe every 10 casts, you'll get a fish. And a lot of people look at us like we're crazy, but we're just, you know, not doing anything uh, fancy. We're just casting out, slow retrieve in. And once in a while, just, you know, kind of maybe jerk it a little bit or twitch it a little bit. And that's all you gotta do. That's all you gotta do. But the only, the only downside of these is, is it is fairly light. This is, even the bigger ones, this is probably not even a quarter ounce. So, uh, they don't cast very far. So the only downside of this is you do want to use a lighter line. Um, you want to use, I would say, 8 pound at the max. Okay, but this fish is very well at 4 and 6 pound tests. And that's what we've always been using, especially for trout. Trout are very picky when it comes to line diameter and invisibility issues and things like that. So uh, you definitely want 4 or 6 pound. I personally, I like the 6 pound just in case you do catch that big uh, natural trout that's been living in that pond for a while so usually the the stock trout are a lot smaller than the natural ones and there's probably a reason why um, but usually you're gonna have a lot of luck with either color and it's always a good thing to have like if you're trying this one have your buddy try this one I know white's always hot year-round so always get the white it just looks well this one doesn't look like it but if it was nice and clean Coming through the water, it might resemble bait fish, and as you can see, they actually kind of try to duplicate that feet, that scale effect on this body. So it actually might look like bait fish. So other fish might actually want to attack it just because it might look like a minnow or something like that. And this one, I'm not really sure why it's so hot, but for at least for me, but um, maybe it's just like they want to investigate what it is, so the fish will come by, come out and bite it. Um, it's just what it is. Okay, let's get to hookup ratio. Hookup ratio is very good just because of the design of the lure and you're retrieving it. It's a straight retrieve, so it kind of forces the fish to always like do this. Like if you're retrieving it, this thing's spinning like crazy. Kind of like that. It'll spin just kind of like that, right? Kind of like that coming in. It'll force the fish to come from the back and bite it. When they bite it, there's a treble hook right there. Okay, so they're not usually, they're hooked up pretty well. Um, if you find that they are not hooking up pretty well because, say, you got this one and see, this one's got a smaller hook on it, just switch it up to a bigger rooster tail and it'll work very well. The, the downside is you cannot change these out. Like the wire that's in here. Well, actually, maybe you can't. Well, actually, you can. Just found out about that. Okay, so if you're getting miss hits, change it out. You can change it. There's a, it's basically a latch here. Undo it with some pliers and put some, uh, put a new one on it. But you can undo it. Right there. See that? There's a, it's basically like a D-link or, or like a ring. You can do it on that one. Let me see if you can do it on this one. Yep, you can do it on this one too. Okay, so put a bigger hook on it if you're... If you're not getting the hookup ratios. Usually hookup ratios on these are pretty good. I've seen my usual percentage on hookup ratios about 90%.
Okay, so I've just gone over all the good things about this and how I've fished this throughout the years. I've got, I don't even know how many experience years on these. But uh, there's a lot between us, the group, and 24-7. So it's definitely a lure for the smaller fish, okay? You don't want, really, a lot of times if you're going to get a hit on this, your target fish is going to be like uh, schooling fish or you're fishing your cover, like a smaller basses. Uh, you kind of beginner stuff, okay? You don't expect to take this out and try to catch a big old pike, you know, like that. Although they will hit it, you know, I don't think these hooks can um, withstand the pressure from a big uh, fish like that. But uh, all the goods aside, let's look at the bad things. The bad things is these guys will twist your line, okay? That's the only downside of this. Well, the reason why they twist the line is when you're pulling this through the water, this blade will be spinning like this. We go like this, right? Pretty much almost like that. Like more, actually, like a, more like close to the body, like, you know, like that, like that. Well, not not wide like this, but well, not like this, but kind of like that. <laughs> well, let me try to get it. You know, like that very last revolution right there. Okay, so as it's doing that, it's not just the blade that's spinning. The entire thing will spin because of this blade scraping up against the body and you know, resistance and things like that. And it's gonna spin the whole thing. So what will happen is it'll eventually start spinning or twisting the line that it's that's uh you that's attached to this okay so that's the that's the major downside of this this lure so uh you just watch out for that because if you get a lot of line twists it'll weaken your line so after about every cast you want to pull out maybe five feet of uh, line in front of your uh the tip of your rod and just let it unwind because it's going to twist and it's going to twist and it's going to twist. And the thing is, when you're rolling this through the water, make sure it's spinning. Like, make sure it's, you can see the blade actually spinning around. Because uh, there's a lot of times, you, if you're retrieving this thing too slow, the, the jig or the, the plate will just sit like that. And it'll just swim kind of like a spoon, like a lifeless spoon. It'll just swim just like that. What you want is to actually have this thing kind of spinning like this. Okay? That's the only thing. You'll see, you can even feel it on a rod tip too. Uh, when it's spinning, it, it gives off like a really, really fine motion on the rod. And if it's not, it's just retrieving it back. It's just like a dead stick. So that's a review on the rooster tails. I mean, there's so many uh, types of fish that will hit it. But our main focus when we're using this is mainly on trout. Trout or uh, schooling fish. Like down south, it'll be uh, white bass, sand bass. Really, really good on them as well. Like I said, the only downside is they are a little weak, so you cannot cast them very, very far. You can probably go out 20, maybe 25 yards on four pound. That's really about it. Uh, it's really a slow sinking lure as well, so it's not like a, a sinker or anything like that that you can cast out and it'll instantly fall to the uh, the bottom. But cast it out, maybe count one, two seconds, and then start your reel, start your retrieve, and. Uh, it's a nice, slow, steady retrieve. Usually, uh, we'll do the trick on all these, or at least find the retrieve where you can feel the blade spinning. And if it's not spinning, just give it a little twitch and then continue to slowly retrieve. And that usually does a trick for uh, uh, starting the spin on the blades. Okay, so that's the uh, retrieve I usually go with, and uh, seems to be working in the uh, the years I've always been using it. I know I've advanced past that point now. I don't hardly ever fish these anymore, but you know, if there's nothing else is biting, none of the big game fish is hidden, and you just want to have some fun, always pull out a rooster tail. It's always the go-to lure for just anything. Alright, see you guys.